What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to helping you grow downloads for your mobile app. And today, I want to talk about some of the ASO experiments that you should be testing in 2020. Look, the brutal truth is it's very difficult to get any type of awareness in the app store these days. And ASO is a constantly ever-changing algorithm that Apple and Google are always testing because they want to make sure the end user, us, the end user has the best experience. And so some of the hacks that used to work may not be working anymore. And so how do you really stay ahead in 2020 when I want to go through three different strategies just for you? Number one, optimize for conversions. Look guys, this was a tip that I got from Laura from AppTweak, great ASO tool that you guys should check out. It's called AppTweak. Dot com, but she said, use your short description to optimize for conversion. And so I said, all right, Laurie, I'm going to give it a shot and see what happens. So here's the results from one of our clients. This is the Google play experiment that we ran. And here's what we saw that actually using social proof had a better install rate from a conversion perspective than just having the current version. And the current version obviously had a lot of different keywords that we were trying to target. Whereas the social proof version said we had, this was for a, a phone number app. And essentially we had 800,000 of cities, but we we're really highlighting the social proof of the app and talking about some of the big numbers that were included within the app. And rather than having, making sure that we had all the right keywords, we just said, hey, look, this is what a good ad would look like, right? And when I say ad, like a Facebook ad, this is what we would be saying in a, in a Facebook ad in our screenshots. And so we decided to test it out and we actually saw really good results in that there was a about a 15% increase in terms of performance. And so we applied that social proof version and we didn't see too much of a slide when it came to keywords. Now, short description in the Google Play store is still highly weighted. So make sure you test with your versions out and see which one performs better because maybe your keyword rankings take a dip even though your conversions go up. So maybe there's a net benefit there. I also wanted to talk about social proof and screenshots. So when you think about optimizing for conversions, think about also optimizing your screenshots always for conversions. And so this, I'm gonna quickly go through this because I've talked about this at length in other videos, but essentially here's one of our older clients and we saw a 91% increase in downloads without any changing, without changing any keywords, the subtitle, nothing. And we saw a great improvement in downloads, almost double the downloads. And here's what they, we did. We added this one main screenshot because for the iPhone, the first three are gonna be really important. On Google Play, the short description is really important because that's what's shown in the search results, right? So when you think about optimizing for conversions, think, so, think about what's showing in the search results. On Google Play, it's gonna be these, the short description. On iOS, it's gonna be these first three screenshots. And so you wanna really make sure that you have the social proof in your search results. And this is this customer has some amazing customer of their own using the app. And so we highlighted the logos in there. Number two, here's what I've noticed is the apps out there that really think from a long-term perspective, they build a brand. And I wanna go through some of the examples that I've experienced with some of my past clients have done really well in the app space, right? Unplug. So this is a great meditation app and you're gonna to start to see a theme. So let me see if you guys can pick it up. But Unplug is a meditation app and obviously Unplug is a great name for a meditation app, right? You're letting go, you're unplugging from everyday life and you're really starting to meditate and really be calm, right? Calm is another one. So this was a great app. Another client of ours, and this was featured by Apple, this is also featured by Apple, Slumber, and it's an app that does sleep stories, so it helps you fall asleep. Another fantastic, well-designed app, we're able to get it featured by Apple, and their screenshots are beautiful, as you can see, but Slumber, fall asleep, Slumber, makes sense, right? They're starting to build a brand. 
And the last one I wanna highlight is another app that I've been working with for a very long time and we've been doing really, really well on is Playlist. And it's a music app. It's a free music app. So you guys should definitely check it out. You can import any playlist that you want and you can stream this music for free. Now I pay for Apple Music, but if you don't wanna pay for any of these streaming services like Apple Music or Spotify, you can use playlists and stream all your favorite playlists music for free, sort of like Pandora, but you get to decide what kind of songs you wanna to listen to. So check it out and it's cool because it's a, it's a way that you can share playlists and listen together, but it's a really good app, but I love that name, Playlist for a music app, right? And so if you think about building a brand, you think about keywords and brand and what are some keywords that are very short and very sweet, but that are also related to the main keyword that I want to rank for. So unplug meditation, slumber, sleep stories, sleep in general, right? Playlist, music, they're all, this brand is related to the main generic ASO keyword that I want to rank for. So that's what I'm talking about when I say building a brand. It allows you to do both. One, rank really well for the keyword that you're ultimately trying to go after. And then secondly, the brand name itself start, starts having search volume as well. So when I started doing ASO for these clients, like I came up with something that was easy because they were already ranking well for their branded terms, playlist, slumber, and unplug. They're able to drive downloads just from that branded term because there's already search volume for that. So that's what I'm talking about. You're able to leverage your brand name and really have the search volume there already without really not doing that much with ASO. You get a professional like me working on ASO, we're able to really 2X, 3X, 10X it, the downloads, but you start having the foundation already and your brand starts having volume. So if you think about the online dating space, I can tell you for a fact that Tinder, Bumble, you know, Coffee Meets Bagel, all the big dating apps have a greater search volume than online dating. So think about building a brand and I'm gonna give you a tool that I really love using when I'm thinking about terms that are related to the main term that I wanna use. And this tool is called One Look. Like I've shared this since what, 2014, 2013 when I first started sharing content through the podcast and YouTube channel. But One Look is an awesome tool that I use to really think about different keyword ideas. And so if you put meditation into one look, and it's essentially a thesaurus, right? But it's a reverse dictionary and gives you so many more keywords than a thesaurus would. And so it's called One Look Reverse Dictionary, and I'll link it up into the description as well. But here you can see all the different keywords or brand names that is related, that are related to meditation. And you can find one. You can put all these keywords into your favorite ASO tool and see which ones have volume and which ones have other apps called this. And if there aren't too many, then you could start ranking well for these keywords because they will have search volume. So let me try to find one. Stillness, right? That might be one. Look, I haven't done the research yet, but that might be one. Minute, that's interesting, right? Meditation, obviously, or mediation. Reflection, reflection, musing, thoughtfulness. So like these become certain keywords that you may, one, want to have in your keyword field, but two, also name your app this particular phrase because then you're able to leverage the search volume that comes with these particular keywords. So like mystic might be interesting to, do, to think about too, restfulness, you know? And then hopefully as you start picking up, steam for your downloads and ranking well for meditation, what will happen is the brand name, if it doesn't already have traffic in the very beginning, let's say you find one that has like a two traffic, right? But because you're starting to build that brand name, get some awareness, that brand name will start picking up. And I've seen that with other apps as well. And the last one is to use emojis to stand out. Look, again, it is very, very difficult. Everybody knows the keyword optimization tricks. Everybody knows a lot of different stuff out there. And so one way you wanna stand out is to use emojis. Make your icon stand out. Make your app name stand out. Make your short description stand out. Kinda of like what I just said before with social proof. So you wanna use, you wanna leverage emojis to really make something stand out within the search results. Because if I'm looking for a meditation app, I'm gonna start looking at what the search results show. That's the app name, and that's gonna be the screenshots on iOS. On Google Play, it's gonna be the app name and short description. So how do you make sure that your app stands out in this whole sea of search results. So let's go through some examples that I saw while doing some research. 
All right, so here's one. I did meditation. As you can see, as of this recording, it's still 2019, but they're starting to leverage 2020 already. So now you can start to see like, hey, oh, I'm already thinking ahead. This icon really stands out to me. It says 2020. Let me go check out the app. And they've done really well, right? Like they got 5,000 plus reviews. It's, it's ranking decently for meditation when I look for it. And so this stands out to me as having something uniquely different than all the other search results out there. And when I talk about emojis, check out this one that I found as well. I did exercise because I got to tell you guys, if you ever want to figure out like what people are doing, look up fitness type of apps, especially on Google Play. They're going to be doing some really creative things. And so if you're thinking about what, the, what are the new hacks, pay attention to the fitness category because they, these guys are really competitive and willing to do other things. But the one thing I want to point out here is he's using emoji in his developer name. Didn't know that was possible, but that's what he's doing. And guess what stood out to me? I saw this little emoji in the search results and it made me want to click on it. And so that's why I have this particular screenshot because this actually stood out to me. All right, the next one. And this was a past podcast guest of mine and they talked about this frequently actually. They talked about this in the interview, but the, the app, they're using emojis in the short description and they A-B tested it and they said, look, it performs a lot better with having emojis in there. If you listen to that episode, he talks a lot about the different tricks in there. And so I'm assuming obviously the 2019 little badge is gonna be a little another trick. And so as you can see, 2020 is already starting to happen and that other app is starting to really utilize that 2020. And so what I wanna point out is by having that year, it makes your app feel newer, like up to date, rather than something that's been around that maybe hasn't been updated and with that type of 2020 being called out, it makes it feel like it's new, it's brand new, and everybody loves brand new stuff, right? Now, on the iOS side, I wanna show you guys this developer, and I've done this trick a bunch of different times, but essentially, you can see through their apps that they're using these little things, these little symbols on iOS. Now, on iOS, you can't use emojis, and I don't know what kind of symbols these are, so I don't know what Apple allows you to use and what they don't, but I'm pointing to these guys because obviously they've been able to use a bunch of different, and for the developers out there, I think it's Unicode, right, that you can pull out these things. But as you can see, like they've done some really cool stuff in making their app name stand out. Equilibrium, they have this little symbol. Shapes, one line, the infinity symbol, this square. They're using these things. So when you start searching for something very simple, like maybe square or square it or shapes or infinity slice, that you're able to, these apps actually stand out a lot more than your other apps. And that's what the whole point is. As the app store gets more and more crowded, more and more app developers are continually coming into the space, it's harder and harder to stand out. And so you're gonna, as an indie developer or as a founder, you're gonna have to find little ways to make your app stand out. And I love this because it sort of fits in line with the app name as well. All right, guys, that's it. As we move on to the new year, look, there's gonna be some exciting new things. iOS 13 has completely changed the game for ASO within Apple. And then I'm sure Google is doing a ton more stuff as well. So stay tuned. I hope to share more and more content with you in the upcoming year and I look forward to hopefully seeing you guys because we got some events planned for next year as well. So look, be on the lookout for that. That's it. I'll see you on the next video.